I think the main benefit for Skegness will be hopefully proof that things are changing and investment is coming through. In 2024, what they're going to see is the proof of the pudding. We'll be seeing the, first, the foundations are going in for the college happening. The railway station will be delivering on what we promised there. Changes in the high street, developments on the foreshore. And all of a sudden the town takes on a completely different feel. And we now have to start working on getting maximum value from this further £20 million we have that can be another game changer for the town. So I want to see Skegness grow not just as a centre for tourism, but also as a place where people want to uh, live themselves, where they want to bring up their families and when they want to start their own businesses. All of the levelling up funding, all of the town's funding, all of the endowment is focused on trying to get that combination right. And it's a real commitment from the centre of government to places like Skegness and I think we're already starting to see some huge developments, but we're going to see a lot more in the future as well. Skegness has always been a popular attraction, and this investment will see the town centre improve, the access to the railway station improve, education and skills improve, and actually the quality of life for our residents should improve as well. So we're very pleased to see this investment. It will make a real difference in quite quick time to visitor attraction and also to the quality of life for our residents. The long-term plan for towns initiative by government is incredibly important. The South East Lincolnshire Council's partnership has landed an incredible amount of money and Skegness has uh, gained £20 million to look to dealing with town centre issues. We're really pleased about that. On the back of the town's fund success we've had, we know that we can make a real difference to Skegness town centre. People have changed the way they use town centres and shop and live and we need to recognise that and I'm pleased that government have given us that, us that money. The Connected Coast Board was set up when we heard about town funds deal and up to £25 million being available per town and we know that the coast needs to work together to achieve success so we thought it was best to not duplicate and set Mablethorpe and Skegness up as one board and use all that experience to deliver absolutely the best bids and we were extremely successful. We had two of the biggest um, funds granted to us in Mablethorpe and Skegness, nearly £49 million, and we're extremely proud of what we've achieved. Because of the makeup of the board, we have people from health, from environmental agencies, from the councils, from the private sector, from the third sector, education, etc. So we can make sure we're delivering what's absolutely best for our coastal strip, but also try and avoid duplication. The last thing we want to do when Mablethorpe and Skegness are so close together is invest in two projects that only deliver exactly the same things. So I think we're extracting the maximum amount of synergy. And the, 50 mil, or the nearly 50 million pounds is great, but what we also have to consider, we've got nearly double that with match funding, where people are prepared to contribute to these projects because they realise how important they are. The Skegness Learning Campus is the first purpose-built post-16 education and training environment that Skegness has had and it will deliver a wide variety of vocational and academic programmes. It will ensure that learners don't have to travel all over the county to find that education and it will mean that we can bring learners and employers together as part of that sort of heart of the community. We should have spades in the ground in early 2024 with uh, the opening for our new learners into you know, the brand new facility in September 2025. I'm really excited about inviting both existing learners who will progress into the building and new learners into a fantastic space that we're going to create for them that's got brilliant facilities that will enable them to develop the skills that they need to support the local economy of the future. Over £3.3 million is going to be invested into Skegness Railway Station. £2.9 million of that comes through the Government Town Deal Fund this is through Connected Coast and East Lindsay District Council. We also have funding from East Midlands Railway and Network Rail. There's going to be internal and external works. These improvements are going to include improved wayfinding, upgrading heating, CCTV and IT systems. We're also going to bring back the old building which is at the front of the station and bring that back to use. So within that building, there's going to be new rental units and a new waiting room. So not only are the improvements that we are doing to the station, we're going to be adding some new facilities. We're going to have a new community room, a community cafe, startup offices, new retail units, 
as well as a change in places. So for us at East Midlands Railway, we're very excited to deliver the station, not just for our customers, but for the community of Skegness as well. Our work in Skegness involves um, support for businesses on Lomley Road. In some ways, the interventions in property might be quite small, but our work is about bringing back some of the historic features on some of the high street shops, but also making some repairs as well, so to help helping businesses make some repairs to their property. And we're also carrying out improvements to Tower Gardens. That follows consultation with the people of Skegness. Um, and following that consultation, we'll be introducing new planting schemes, a sensory planting area, and they'll be running water in the pond for the first time in 40 years, which is a really exciting outcome. I think particularly the work that we do um, actually directly helps the people of Skegness. So lots of these funded projects, often local people don't feel that they're receiving a direct benefit. But with the work that we're doing to Tower Gardens and also to people's businesses in the high street, there is a direct benefit. So local people can see some of those funds going directly into their workplaces and into their own businesses. So far we have planning consent for repair work to seven properties on Lomley Road and we also have planning approval for the works to commence in Tower Gardens. Um, so they should be starting this winter and we'll be really excited to see those projects on the ground. Well actually where we stood now is a centre of maybe three or four different projects which will all interlink. It's about revitalising this area of the town. If you actually look you know, over my shoulder now. What we're looking at here was actually laid out in the 1930s. So it's not, you know, progressed a long way since then. So we've got four exciting projects that we're looking to bring forward, which are going to add some life and vitality back into this area. I can see many, many job opportunities coming. This area currently employs nobody. So these will be brand new job opportunities. And of course, job opportunities are better for the town, puts more money in people's pockets and makes us even more vibrant visitor attraction. We have, uh, put these lots out to the market to see market interest. That happened uh, a year ago. Uh, there was 18 expressions of interest who came back with ideas of what they would like to do here. And the officers at East Lindsay District Council have narrowed those down using a scoring matrix to their preferred bidders. The next step for all these projects is to allow the officers to work up detailed drawings with the individual people who've come forward with an expression of interest so that we can put some basically put some meat on the bones and then carry these forward, see which are going to be best for the town, which are going to be better for our visitors and more importantly which could be better for our residents. The Culture House is a Scandinavian concept where arts, leisure time and entertainment all exist under one roof. But what is a culture house? Really a culture house is just a place with many rooms and what you decide to do in those rooms is part of what your culture exists to be. We're really excited to bring this new concept to the UK and we're looking forward to working with as many partners as we possibly can. What we want to do is to try and attract people for a more of a wider variation of culture and entertainment to come and use the building on more of an ad hoc basis and to do this they need to feel comfortable with the building that they're entering and we're looking to try and establish light, a fresh approach and a kind of a warm environment actually from the outset. The visitor experience will be something that's a little bit different. They can still expect to see the same high quality performance that they come to expect of the Embassy Theatre on stage, but the actual surroundings that they're entering into will be slightly different. The Scandinavian model of Culture House works very much on the basis of um, immersiveness, actually allowing customers to really feel part of the environment. We're going to be starting works in the auditorium January 2024. We're going to be reopening in its complete glory March 2025. As part of the Cultural Development Fund um, for the Skegness Pier element of the project, we will be renovating the Skegness Beach Huts and pedestrianising the pathway between Skegness Pier and Bottoms up to the beach. Some heritage works on the pier deck itself and some renovations to the pier facade.
in terms of the beach huts, the renovation of that area. It's become a, a really antisocial area and the refurbishment of them will bring that area and that building back to life. In addition to that, we'll have lots of free cultural activities for families and visitors to Skegness as well as residents throughout the year. It will provide a free space for people to come and be entertained or for new startup companies to have the opportunity to take on a unit uh, and really kickstart their business without um, any massive overheads for them uh, so they can uh, grow and, and uh, develop within the town. These are big investments. We are talking millions of pounds being spent on art and culture in East Lindsay. That is unheard of. That has never ever happened. So I'm great, very, very grateful for all our funders for the excellent work they're doing and for the vision of the Towns Fund Board which have brought all this together. It's an amazing, an amazing time uh, to be representing Skegness. A fantastic time to be doing it. The Police Training Academy in Skegness is a superb new facility that really does place itself at the heart of the east of Lincolnshire community to enable people to join the police from that part of our county, be trained in the heart of their own community and then serve the county as police constables. So it's a really good opportunity for Lincolnshire Police to not be centred over here in Lincoln but really to uh, make sure that they're working with our communities across the county to be part of that area. So I think it's enabled us to train more officers um, through Uplift. We've actually uplifted our number of officers um, and the state is quite tight. So it's actually been able us to recruit more than perhaps we would have done and train them in a facility that's new, that's fit for purpose and is actually based within the heart of our communities. So it's been a really positive um, thing for Lincolnshire Police. It does mean that we'll have a greater number of recruits coming from that part of the county. So the employment opportunities are there. It means that there's more money going into the local economy both from the accommodation that recruits use and the um, various ways that um, they spend their money locally. But it also just means that the pu public can be more assured, seeing more uniformed officers on the streets and knowing that Lincolnshire Police has invested in their community for the long term. The multi-user trailer, it, it follow, it's roughly a mile long um, and, and works onto a four mile sort of circular route including the promenade um, along the, the beachfront and also provides you know safe transit route for people between Ingermells and Chapel St Leonard's to allow them to move around the resorts without necessarily having to resort to you know car or, or the bus. We planted um, around about 13,000 trees and, and shrubs and hedgerows and things like that. Um, we dug um, and paved the, the, the road, put in guardrails across the, the sort of culverts across the ditches um, linked, into the, and linked, linked into the existing footpath network, so there's, there's quite a bit of work involved. But it's a great example of national and local government working together with businesses to deliver assets for, for the whole community. Prior to it being here, we often used to see mums pushing pushchairs down the side of the A52, which is a 60 mile an hour road. And it really wasn't a pleasant sort of visitor experience for holiday makers or for, for the locals. We see joggers on here, cyclists using it. It's a real asset from a safety perspective. And also I think from a, a visitor experience and a, and a sort of place um, perspective, it's, it's a real asset to the area and, and improves quality of life. Yeah. The opportunities that the Labyrinth Up Fund brings to East Lindsay is phenomenal. Um, we've got three projects in East Lindsay on the Labyrinth Up Fund, and that's the old police station, which is now the theatre at Spilsby. There is Alford Windmill, which is a Grade 1 listed mill, and there is the Manor House at Alford, which again is, is a listed building. All three are in need of extensive improvements um, to ensure that they are uh, good for the future, uh, but they also need to be able to generate an income uh, and make provision for themselves in the future. This fund was most unlikely to have ever been um, brought as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a project by the council because of the vast sums and um, we wouldn't have that sort of spare capacity in our finances. So it, it will bring in um, pride of place, it will bring in tourism opportunities, it will bring in employment, get people interested in, in culture and leisure, um, see what there is uh, round about for people to be entertained and to understand their heritage. So uh, it, it goes a long way towards fulfilling lots of what we want to achieve. 
what I would like to say most is a really big thank you to all the board members and the other partners who have been involved in getting this to this stage. Most people won't appreciate probably how much work has gone into that, but I know how hard people have worked in delivering it. Thank you for everybody who's been involved in the consultation project, and I hope you'll be really proud of what we're going to do. And 2024 is going to be a very exciting year, and hopefully even more investment can come into the coast following this.